Hey, thanks for tuning in to the Land at Home Show. Today, my friend Philippe and I are making dove poppers. Get this, with the doves that we harvested on a hunt last week. Hi, I'm Stephen Davey Davis, your land specialist and residential realtor here in Central Kentucky and beyond. And like I said, we're making up some dove poppers today, some jalapeno dove poppers. Um, this is my first time making them. We'll get more into that in a second, but I would be rude if I didn't introduce my friend Philippe Tuyo. How's it going? Uh, Philippe, tell everybody kind of like quick who you are, what do you do? So, um... I have my license as well, my real estate license. That's how I met Steven, but I also own a financial planning firm called Heritage Point Wealth Management here in Lexington and um, love to love to hunt, love to fish, love to be outdoors. So that's kind of what drew us together. But sure. um, yeah, and definitely love some dove poppers. So. Yes, I'm so excited. Yeah. Um, before we get into the poppers, let's go back to how we got to this day. So I'm just going to do a quick little rewind so you can see how we got here. At 6 a.m., I'm going on my first dove shoot. It's almost 7, and I'm going on my first dove hunt. So uh, let's get rolling. Um, well, folks, we're on. And... Uh, Philippe, say hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> he suddenly becomes the shyest person in the world when there's a camera on him. Uh, but we're sitting here at the Bluegrass Sportsman League, like I told you, in the car where you probably couldn't even see my face. But the lighting should be better now, and we're waiting for the 8 a.m. Uh, would you call it a deadline? Uh, just the... What's the opposite of a, a start line? Start. An, a live line? The, the shooting time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, clearly it's light out, but there's an 8 a.m. Uh, rule. So we've got ourselves situated. Hopefully I don't spook all of these doves. Philippe has been giving me the rundown. Yeah. What do you feel? I don't know that I've ever had... I mean, okay, so here's the thing. I hear all these different words. So we're going dove hunting. I know what a morning dove is, but it's effectively a pigeon, and then I feel like when they're served in restaurants, they say squab. Are they all the same thing? I don't know what a squab is. I've never heard the term squab. Really? I've never had dove in a restaurant either, but yeah, yeah. I mean, there's definitely different. There's morning dove, there's the Euro uh, ringed dove, which is a bigger dove with a ring around its neck. I think it's the Euro. Um, and there's like different subspecies of dove for sure. And you'll notice like some will be, you know, a good size, some will be a little bit smaller. So it just depends what we have flying in and, um, they're really good. <laughs> That's all I can say. I'm coming home. I've seen a castle in Wales But I'd rather wake up beside you And breathe that old familiar smell well, I never thought you could leave me I figured I was the one But I understand your sadness So I guess I should just hold my tongue all right, now that you are all caught up, uh, let's show you a few of the things that we have here. We have a little rub that we threw together for the actual birds themselves. Um, what do we put in here? Just some salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, and poultry seasoning. We have some jalapenos from my garden, which 
have been very good, and a lot of them have been turning this awesome, like, reddish color. I don't know what's up with that, but I'm very excited. Um, we've got bacon, we got cream cheese, and then, of course, we got doves and some toothpicks, which... And beer. And, well, yes, and that's beer. Right. Yeah, that's for, for us. Um, so those are our ingredients, and I think now we'll just kind of, we're going to walk and talk through this and shoot the shit. So uh, let's get started. You tell me cool. where I need to So the first step be. is, you know, just have the jalapenos and de-seed them. So we'll get started with that. And we want pretty nice sized ones. Yeah, I like I've pretty nice more. ones. I'll, I'll, nice I vary them. I mean, whatever I have is usually what I use, but obviously just cut that. I don't know can see that, but this is one of my ones that's starting to turn a little bit in a good way. Um, so, you know, the, the folks saw that we went hunting and we, we saw that the first date was not really all that exciting. Yeah, one bird, but... Um, what, what do you love about dove hunting? Like, why, why do you like it so much? Um, for me, it's kind of the informal kickoff of hunting season. You know, it's right before archery opens here in Kentucky. Um, but it's also super social. I mean, the eating part, the cooking part is social, but you don't have to sit there and be quiet or not move as much as your yeah. deer, deer, you know? I mean, yeah. they still, as you saw, some of the doves are a little smarter than, than us, but, um, it's just really social. So that's a really fun part of it for me. And I think bird hunting is, that was where I started hunting, right? Right. And, um, I think that's where most people start just because... It's not a huge gun, it's not a huge kick, and um, I don't think it's as emotional to a good catch uh, as killing up a large game. Side. So, um, what do you shoot on? You had a couple guns with you. Yeah. Uh, on the first day, you were on your first gun, right? Um, no, I, I think I brought my 12 gauge both days. Um, oh, second, the second day, day. The second day, we had the 20. Yes, because his wonderful right wife was with us. Yes. Taylor, she took some great pictures. If you saw in the little recap of day two, that's pretty much all Taylor. Um, she's a hunter in her own right, um, kind of an assassin, yeah. if you ask me. But, <laughs> but she was kind of being our, I don't know, she just was chilling. Yeah, she day. hung. Hung out with us and didn't do much shooting, but um, at least a bird. She did do a lot of photography, so yeah. And she does have a good eye, so she does. Those um, are very pictures. But yeah, she she had um, my uh, Beretta twenty gauge. So right. right. Okay, the so, one that we yeah. Are which is usually what I shoot. use, but it always seems like Dove are just out of range, so I wanted to use my twelve gauge. Gotcha. So, what is next? All right. So next is the cream cheese. So usually. You know, what I, what I do is we can kind of prep the jalapeno, um, so maybe just put this in the middle and we can just, you know, get these spread out and I'll just grab it and load it up with cream cheese. Just take a little cut of cream cheese gotcha. and kind of smear it in the middle. And I'm just going to slice this in half yeah. so we can both. And then, so we'll get that done, and then we'll go ahead and tackle the dove. Usually I do that first, but it is. Alright. And I try to load these up with... Like a lot. Yeah, because, you know, it, it doesn't melt. On the grill, but you know you'll you'll lose some just from the heat of the grill, you know. Yeah. So, uh, Be generous. Yeah, I, I'm always pretty generous with it, um, but it's personal preference at the end of the day. So, made some of these from the opening weekend for the guys. Um, the hunt club guys. Yeah, the hunt club guys and came out really good. I soaked, sometimes I'll soak the the uh, dove breasts in buttermilk, and I happened to have some at home last time, so I did that. And Why did you have buttermilk? I'm uh, just curious. So like, made I made butter. And oh, right. Butter, you did tell me that you made yeah, butter like a couple weeks ago. Buttermilk is a byproduct of butter, so um, just had just enough to soak all of those in uh, buttermilk. Yeah, I don't usually buy buttermilk, and I rarely buy it just to soak game, because I just... I feel like that's kind of wasteful, but um, it's 
I think it made a little bit of a difference, you know. Oh, for sure. I mean, um, that's how I would fry chicken. Not that you fry these, but like I think it's a pretty common uh, preparatory step yeah. when when making birds of for sure. many kinds. I mean, I do sometimes. I'll you know pluck the feathers and have a whole bird and that was really good fried. I kind of bread them with cornmeal and a little bit of flour, but um, that can be another really great way to to prepare dove. Dove's versatile. I mean, I think it's delicious all around. And You said um, you think it's a good, kind of a, a gateway bird. You were saying, like, it's not the gamiest. It's not the... Um, yeah, it's just mild in taste, I think. Like, some... I think some... Um, like, I did a, I do... Well, I did do a lot of snipe hunting in Florida, and we have snipe here too, just not really around here because they're kind of a wetland style bird. Um, they like marshes and things like that, but they're very dark and it can have a, a gamey flavor. Sure, um, kind of like geese or duck exactly. or something. Yeah, exactly. Want to uh, yeah. wipe off a little bit? Um, all, right. all right, so our next step. So next step is, um, so we'll put some uh, you know, seasoning on these. I usually hit the cream cheese with seasoning. Um, and I guess we can do that, you know, just a little bit up. And then we'll hit the, the breast too. So the, the next step though is just getting, and uh, we need this, well, we can move that there, but, um, over here, but. Making sure my cameras are still recording. I get so paranoid. It's been so <laughs> hot. Like I have lost footage on my drone. I have lost footage. Really? On um, I can't remember which one of these cameras. It was overheating and just shut. Down. I mean, like they they're built to shut down on purpose. But right. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I get very paranoid. I'm like, do I still see the blinking lights? Yeah. All right. So we've got our doves. Yeah. So yeah, some some guys you can just kind of put your finger and separate them from the bone, but I, I tend to just take a, a little knife and get as close to that breastbone as possible. And you can kind of just fillet these right off. Okay. Um, you mine up a little bit here. And you can remove the skin if you choose, but. I still got feathers, so. Oh, feathers, yeah. Leave <laughs> <laughs> those for this. Dusty. Yeah, Boy. right. He is curiously so, and then I'll missing just, today. You know, as those get clean, just kind of lay them right on a, a popper. Did you already do, um, <laughs> you kept them at your house. I wasn't sure if you got all the pellets and things out and um, you went through. No, I usually just do that while I'm doing this. I mean, I, I don't kill myself looking for BBs because you'll still find a couple, you know, and to me it's not the biggest deal, but, gotcha. you know, if you're having guests that maybe aren't used to BBs, probably best to. Get them out, but um, with this knife. Some of these are a little. You move a lot faster than I do. When we were cleaning these, like you went ham. I think I got through two, and you had already gotten through most of them. Yeah, it'll it'll come with time. I think, but I mean, just a really this one was really nice. Nice breast. And I'll see how I shot that one. Yeah, you probably did. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Chances are you shot it. All right. I got through my first one. All right. And I don't see anything wild here, so. Next one. Yeah, that one. Did you clean the one that was, yeah, that one? That was the one I think that was just kind of. Mangled? Yeah, unfortunately. But. This guy still has some feathers, though. All right, so while we're doing this, um, I'm curious, when you are dove hunting, do you ever use um, decoys? We talked a lot about decoys, but like, yeah. do you own any? Do you prefer it? I don't have any dove decoys. Um, I did growing up. My dad always had decoys, mm -hmm. but um, it just depends. I mean, you know, if it's a quick hunt, I, I don't think, you know, they're not hard to set up, but I don't have any right now, so I haven't used them really in a while, but um, I definitely do, you know, as we kind of saw, 
you know, I think they can kind of help draw the attention away from the hunters to just, you know, the decoys. So that can be helpful when, when dove, you know, have been shot at already this year. And, um, so I definitely, you know, I've been talking about getting decoys for a little while here. Um, I just haven't, hasn't been a priority. Uh, yeah, because you're like halfway into deer season, and mentally speaking, you've been looking at your trail cam. You were looking at your trail cams while we were sitting uh, for these doves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're solid. I mean, you know, we've been hunting. We hunted this Friday. We hunted uh, Wednesday night, and I had deer in front of me for like 45 minutes. So a small buck and a doe, but they just didn't come into range. Uh -huh. and, uh, Taylor had my wife had uh, some some doe come in in front of her, and um, it's still early, so we're not. You know, we're really, we've had some good bucks on camera, so we're trying to give them the opportunity to come in first, but, um... I'm hoping it's the best for you. You might even convince me to get out there with you again, but actually yeah. to, to take a deer. Yeah. We'll see. I think it's worth it. Like we said, even, you know, um, I don't know if you've ever talked about the hunter. I think it's called the hunter for the hungry. Yep. I've never talked about it on the show, but, um... But I definitely I know of it and have met through backcountry hunters and uh, backcountry hunters and goes through the field the fork program. I got to I meet right, one yeah. of the um, the organizers. He might even be the president. Very cool. Yeah, that's a great program. And I I usually eat all the deer that I kill, so I have never donated. But we Taylor and I have talked about it because um, we can you know you can kill. A decent amount of deer a year and um you know it's a lot of meat for a family too but we do eat a lot of venison so usually we we're about out right now we got a little bit left but um it's a great way to you know provide for the less fortunate i think and i spoke with uh, one of the processors deer processors out of lawrenceburg uh -huh. uh, i think it was mark wells and you know they don't really open full swing until I think the first week in a muzzleloader, don't quote me on that, but I think for that or, or gun season, but um, they opened early this year because, um, you know, they wanted to participate in that program. So mm. I think that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. All right. We are, oh, okay. I think I found a, nope, that's just a blood vessel. Blood vessels trick me. Sometimes I think that they're uh, some of the shot. Yeah. But. And, you know, sometimes you get some of that damaged tissue, um, that I think uh, looks like just chunks of blood. I'll do that. So get my fingers just a little bit clean. All right, so our next uh, step here. So I usually put a little bit more seasoning on the dove again because we're grilling, you know, it tends to. And we don't use any oil. No. We're not going to use any oil. No, the okay. bacon kind of. All right, we haven't even gotten to the bacon part. Yeah. So. Um, some more seasoning? Yeah. You, right. Well, I don't. So we can save this. I'll just try to sprinkle it on there. So if we stick our dove fingers in there, I'm not going to want to eat it, probably. <laughs> so I'm pretty, you know, generous in terms of how much I put on. But I should have brought a spoon out. Yeah, the next step is simple. I mean, you just grab these and, you know, I was telling you right before, I, sometimes I'll, uh, if the bacon's really long, I'll... I'll cut them in half, but I like bacon, so I usually, you know, like this I think is perfect. So kind of grab the first one and then grab a slice of bacon and really just, this might be, uh, that's a good, good size. So just kind of wrap it and then I'll take, I'll try to start and finish in the middle of the jalapeno. So that way when I just put one, one uh, toothpick through it, it kind of catches all the bacon and holds it on because it does take a little bit for the bacon to cook on the grill, sure. but um, I think uh, I'm quite excited about this. Yeah, I'm hungry, so. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the smallest people that I know who eats the most. I, like I mean, you are. I would not call you like a big guy, but you eat like a linebacker. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty I like remarkable to watch. I, I love it. Uh, I gotcha. Um, and what are your other 
What other ways do you prepare the oven? You said you sometimes have well, fried them. Yeah, we kind of bread them. Um, there's like this, my dad has this recipe. Um, it's like a Vietnamese, it's more traditionally quail, um, like a Vietnamese preparation of quail where you, you fry them. Uh, and we'll do that sometimes. Um, I haven't done it in a while, but we'll do that or just lightly bread it and just kind of put it in some oil. Um, and that's really good too. There's I think it's pretty cool ways. that you're, that you shoot on the, the gun that your dad gave you. Yeah, that 12 gauge is, that was my first like big, larger shotgun. Um, my first gun was a 410, which I still have too, I just don't use it often because it's a fixed choke. Um, mm. yeah, so. That, for um, about how far then? Like, what do you think? It's just is a like lot more challenging. Limiting, I mean, or what? it's it's limit. Yeah, I, I don't. Like 40 yards? Range wise, uh, I mean, for birds, probably less, mm. you know, ethically. Um, you know, I know a lot of guys for turkey have been using like the TSS uh, 410s. That's become really popular for turkey hunting. Um, double rack one of these. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Try to stretch it as much as possible. So it kind of holds everything together, you know? So that one was a little exposed, but. Um, cool. That one's heavy on the bacon. That's all right. I ain't mad about it. All right, and then one more round of seasoning or no? No, I, that's usually it. Again, I just try to self-contain everything. Is this guy, I just want to make secure. sure like everything is secured. Yeah, I think we're good, but we might want to just- You want another it. toothpick? Yeah, sure. Just to make sure, cause you know, on the grill they get a little messy sometimes. I'm gonna so stick this one here and maybe give that to Dusty or something. I just don't know what I'm gonna do with a half a piece Thanks, of bacon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm gonna store these here. Now the fun part, really, because we get to drink beer and grill. All right. Well, so. we're gonna grill. I don't think you really want to see us do that. So we'll come back to you when it's all finished. But before we do that. What is the goal? I mean, we'll see the finished product, but when someone's doing this, what's the goal of like what they're looking for when they're like, all right, I want to take these off. So again, everyone, you know, even in my family, people like baking super crispy. They like it somewhat soft. You know, I just go a hundred percent off of looks. I mean, you know, when the bacon's done, the dove's done. The dove cooks pretty quickly. So it's really just about the bacon. So as soon as the bacon is to your liking is usually when I take them off. Got it. it. You know, I'd say probably 20, 25 minutes. Sweet. Um, somewhere in that range. But well, really. we're going to do some YouTube magic, and the next time you see us, which will probably be in 10 seconds, we'll be eating these. All right, so they're cooked. We're back. I'm very excited. Um, so am I. Do you want to... We need some paper towel at least. <laughs> there we go. Who's, uh, oh, he's even ripping half. Nice. Wow. Spam. All right, let's do it. Um, I'm going to go in. for I'm going to go in for the crispiest one. one. Ooh, they're hot. Like, rather hot. What do you think? I'm a fan. That's they awesome. Good. Yeah. The jalapenos good. are good. Very nice. Well, folks, I will call this a success. I hope you've <clears> enjoyed <throat> or learned something or both. Um, I doubt you want to sit here and watch us eat the whole thing, but um, I don't really want to eat on camera for the whole time either. So I'm going to say farewell. Uh, if you need to get in touch with me, you know where to do it description of this video um i'll put philippe's social stuff on here too so you can get in touch with him if you'd ever like to he's the money man and also a realtor um and that's all i got you know you'll probably see philippe more 
coming up here. Hunting season is upon us. So, until next time, adios. See you guys.